So we're looking for this toolkit to really set up a kind of robust structure for us to ensure that we genuinely are designing for not the people that we assume are going to kind of inhabit the spaces, not just us as designers people or even our client as people, but actually the kind of full range of inhabitants and visitors to that space. We want to bring together design and social research so that designers can better understand the kinds of places and lives that they're intervening in and designing for. And what we're trying to make them do is to think through their design practice in relation to those meanings, those values, those practices that people, uh, the people they design for bring to their social space. It could potentially be a very efficient way of doing site-specific design solutions. My understanding is that this is the first time this type of workshop is taking place in this country, so it's quite groundbreaking. Uh, so my mission here is to uh, improve the, my social research skills and then when I'm back in Rio just show my colleagues and we're trying to change the way we do it. Maybe 20 years before, all the lighting designers are engineers and they only care about figure, care about energy. That's why the empty public space happens. You get so much input from other, from other people. And also if you work in their own space, they are in a way expert in that space. You are just a visitor. I mean, I'd never walked around White Cross at night before. So this is a really good chance for us to really see what it's like. Every project should have a social research because um, I believe that uh, we should always listen to the community, to the stakeholders. It's more about human efficiency, human-centered. We've been doorstepping people, um, you know, on the streets and asking them questions. Right, as much as possible. But on the on the estate, on the whole, I do feel quite safe where it's open. But then I avoid that street we've just talked about. Okay. Yeah. 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 Only on that side, or also no, your no. both. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I'm here just to develop certain skill about social places because I'm used to working in cities mainly, open space, and uh, I do really don't know how to deal with this kind of people on, on the ground and just meeting people, having information and make something really for people and not my own projection subjective. Out in the evening sometimes, there's a bit uh, dark on the area, so there's some dark spots, so I think they need to improve the lighting as well. You see, you look, look, you look at that light in there, it's like, it looks really great. Yeah. Even they try to keep it the original. The assumptions or our perceptions of the problems were really, really different to actually what people were, what, that lived there were concerned about. <laughs> Sometimes what I notice is children is climbing on that. On the top. Uh, so, yeah. on the top. Are there particular meeting oh, points? Yeah, on the corner. Which corner? The corner of uh, White Cross Street and Dufferin Street. Okay. We really thought that there is a waste of space outside, space is not used, and we thought that we really have to improve and to make them a space. But at the end, today we are not sure anymore because what the real need is that they need to cross, to cross this space in a proper way. The work is complex. We need to think the more multidisciplinary, the more the people understand people, the people understand what lighting is, what the technology is, the spaces and all that. If we come all together, I think we can give much better, probably more more sound, more meaningful, more relevant solutions. Even just kind of, you know, playing with lights outside people's, uh, or in quite close proximity to people's houses, it kind of made them come out, all right, initially to kind of say, what the hell are you doing? But actually then to engage in the conversation that way. And the local residents pass by, they say, oh, it's fascinating, it's beautiful. And I think that the answers that we got are much more detailed and much more poignant than the kind of research that, that we, we get when we go to meetings. I think the benefits of working with, uh, with social researchers, social scientists, is that 
they kind of show us and, and bring us this experience of um, what what are ways of talking to people really uh, what are ways of uh, bringing the conversation or starting a conversation even uh, in a good in a natural way so that people will end up talking to us about space and you never know what they really want even they describe what they want but it's it's not what they want maybe in the end even if you will feel that you're getting lost more and more in the end, I believe that will lead you to a more solid solution, design, solving of a problem. Um, you end up understanding who you're working for and where your job is really uh, important. And this is a thing. I understand this kind of new methodology changes the way I used to think. As much as I can, I am on, on the street with people during day, during night, saying, OK, so what do you think is wrong here? OK, ah, you think that's here, OK. And it's been interesting to see that for many people, um, they very much start from design, and research comes in as a process of testing their ideas, or proving their ideas, or challenging those ideas. Um, so I think that uh, in the last 24 hours, um, I've stopped trying to do that and I've tried to work out really what people are saying and seeing what they really, really do want and what they really do need rather than trying to impose um, what uh, we as experts think. You know, it's always that difficult, that difficult ground between saying, oh no, this is what you really like, this is what you really meant, wasn't it? Between doing that and allowing them to actually kind of explore light themselves, get their hands on light themselves and come to their own sort of conclusions. That's the way that you have to experience light is to get your hands on it and play with it and look at the effect that it has on materials, on each other's faces, on, you know. Many times your first impression of a place, it's not actually the feeling of the people that lives in this place. To get this feeling, actually, you need to spend more time on the place. You need to talk to several people. You need to observe once and again. And you need to talk once and again to people. So social research in design, um, which is what this whole workshop's about, for us involves considering the meanings, practices, values uh, around um, the social. How do people do the social? How do they move through social space? What understandings do they bring? Um, how do they um, make sense of the city at night? Which is, we're dealing with light. So what's the city feel like at night? What I hope we're gonna learn from the workshop is uh, a way to fully integrate social research with design practice and actually see them not as separate parts of the process, but actually integral to one another so that the social research informs the design practice. And the design practice can maybe feed back research questions. Uh, in my previous uh, experience, uh, I always asked myself, I was questioning myself about, I'm doing right, is, I mean, I, I'm not sure if my way to speak to the community or my way of collecting data is, is right we are not sociologists so we were like in an intuitive way of working now with this workshop i think it's stronger for us to have this like um, a, well theoretical basis we need to think shift from the book shift from the figure and consider the people who live here and and their expectation it's made us think differently about light in terms of how it might make a space, so how it might help to create a sense of place. We'd never thought about lighting in that way before. Before I thought it was just common knowledge, but now I, I know it has to be a research behind that. Most of the time there's no time, there's no budget, but this consciousness of who I'm, I'm designing for, it's fundamental. It's a, a key, to, a, a toolkit almost, um, to lighting design specifically, or to the planning of spaces and to make them better, how to make places that are closer to people, uh, really, uh, more appropriate to people. How much of that comes out of, or can you relate back to the kinds of conversations that you've had with the residents? Well, I mean, it sounds very close to me. It sounds very quite connected. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it got from there. Once it, it got from the observation, I mean, we, we noticed it was obvious that in, at lunchtime this place became public. 
those people coexist over there. It, it would be better you know, to define that that relationship, either to for them to recognize that relationship exactly, it either, exists exactly. and now we do with them. Either yeah. for them okay. to 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 feel that still they own that space, but also to make them experience that these people can also enjoy that space yeah. and they can yeah. mix better. Yeah. Did you do anything differently? You feel because of the kinds of conversations you had. Uh, yeah. We have done things differently, mainly in terms of the colour. Um, and also the group were divided on whether the, the lighting at the sides of the portal, lighting up, was, mm -hmm. you know, the, the whole elevation were good. Okay. Um, but we wanted to see what the residents felt. Okay. And when we switched them on, they really liked it. So we thought, OK, well, they like it. And this is much more about the kind of imagery of the place? I think the it's... Aesthetics. Well, the imagery was always there, but it was okay. how do you create it? So the, the passageway, the passageway we have between um, 14th Street and Banner Street is extremely long and large and it really defines yeah, yeah, yeah. the whole um, uh, wayfinding of the space and the orientation of the space. We understood that there's a community, that people know each other and so on. So in order, if we give them something that it's much more of a home atmosphere outside, yeah. Because most of what they said is that they don't sit out here, they meet in their houses or whatever, just because they don't have something out here. Yeah. So we will try to make something that it looks much more like a meeting point, since yeah. they, yeah. They're, the intention there is, it's not that they don't know each other or that they don't meet. It's yeah. just that they yeah. don't feel that this space they can make it. Yeah. So by lighting, if we can create sort of cohesiveness within all of these spaces, because they are physically secluded, if the lighting can create cohesiveness, okay. then it can create that imagery and that identity we were talking about before. Okay. It's really creating that connection between the user and the space itself. Okay. So they're not just going home, but they're coming to an environment that they can identify with. So we're trying to create that, not only with this park space or the seating area, but with the actual building and with the circulation mm -hmm. areas around it. So what we're doing with the park, lining up the trees, mm -hmm. lighting up the hedges, creating that cohesiveness of your okay. feeling and again, If you go back space. to the kind of conversations you were having with residents yesterday, a lot of people expressing an attachment to this space. Yeah. They liked it. it. It really was a language of home. Uh, ex it was. And that's really what we kind of took from it, okay. from all the interviews and talking to the people, is that they do love this space. They do love okay. living here. So I learned a lot how we can actually, academic and professional, they can work together. That I think it should be and should happen more often than what is happening now. Now we are sharing with LSE and it's not so common, uh, this kind of sharing. So it's, I think it's very good. I think having the legitimacy of being associated with a, with a, a highly regarded uh, educational institution, I think will have uh, long-term benefits. Um, it was really fascinating to see how the lighting practitioners approach changed um, when they considered all the social aspects, talking to our residents, how their initial response to the site changed following all of those conversations and the, the designs that they came up at the end of the week um, were completely different and it, they were really exciting designs and clearly influenced by the site and the community that exists here, so it was really exciting to see that. Following the workshop, we um, we have got an ongoing discussion, a dialogue going with LSC Cities um, and the Social Light Movement. We're very hopeful that we'll be able to continue working together. We do need a lighting design for this estate, and we're very hopeful that this group of people can we can all work together in order to achieve that here at White Cross. And also my hope is to go back to my studio and talk about this kind of experiences so that we can possibly start thinking differently and we can start thinking about the user a little bit more. And uh, with this kind of approach, I think we can make something meaningful and less superficial. And I really hope that as social researchers, we will also maybe at some point down the line be more actively integrated in larger design, urban design processes in developments as active participants as social researchers.